Dear viewers, I am so excited today. Uh, the reason is we have uh, Mr. Raj Raghavan, the CHRO of Indigo, and anyone who uh, has flown over the last uh, decade or so in India definitely knows that uh, you know it's one company known for on-time departures and on-time arrivals. So uh, Raj has been uh, a HR leader for well over two decades. Uh, before this, uh, he was with Amazon for eight years and before that, uh, GE for 12 years. Wow, that's awesome. And uh, probably Raj started working before uh, many of uh, the viewers of this channel uh, were even born, I guess. So that's awesome to have uh, Raj with us. Uh, oodles of experience, lots of uh, uh, energy and enthusiasm, and of course, a wonderful mentor. Thank you, Raj. Thank you so much for accepting our invite to appear on uh, Gear Up channel today. You know, Sid, it's so nice to talk to you again. Good to meet you. Um, I'm close to 100 years old. <laughs> when you said I was probably starting to work before many of your viewers were born, but uh, and that's okay. I'm I'm glad when people say, okay, HR veteran. Uh, well, I mean, I I still don't believe I'm a veteran yet, but uh, it does feel good when um, when people introduce you as someone who's done a few things in HR. So. And coming from you, said it's, it's, it's even more interesting. Uh, thank you, Raj. Definitely a guru for many one of us. Um, interestingly, two things. I began my career in aviation uh, with Air Deccan those days. And uh, if you see the name of a channel, it's called Gear Up. And the way we uh, arrived at that after almost three months of uh, uh, brainstorming is that uh, once the aircraft uh, takes off and the piloting says positive rate of climb, uh, there is a call out by one of the pilots saying gear up and that's when uh, the lever for pulling up the wheels is uh, action. So that's how we arrived at the name of the channel. We are ready to take off. And uh, Raj, sir, uh, given your vast experience, uh, your deep expertise, uh, would you like to share a few of your insights or your what are called uh, teachable points of view uh, with our uh, viewers today? Um, you know, um, Sid, you know it as much as I do. Um, in hindsight, everything looks like, you know, it was all planned, you, 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 it all worked out to plan. Uh, careers never work out like that. You know it as much as I do and everybody that's watching it knows. Um, when you look, look back at it, I started working in 1989 when I graduated from Madras School of Social Work. When you look back at the last 30 years, uh, I've been, uh, one thing is uh, I've not been unemployed even for one day. Uh, touch wood. <laughs> I've been I've been well employed. Um, I worked with uh, some really good names, um, and oftentimes I I think you know who you work for is is actually very important. Not just the name of the company, but also the people that you work for. Um, going back in my career when I first started working um, with uh, Eureka Forbes, I was probably the first HR person they ever had in the region. I reported to a gentleman called Anand, and Anand was in uh, Mumbai, and he was the head of HR for the company. And um, he was he was such a simpleton. He he ran HR and several other things in the company. He now runs a, a U.S.-based uh, software technology company in New Jersey. And um, he told me, Raj, you know, it's indeed my privilege to be having professionals like you on my team. I said, oh, you consider me a professional? I just graduated day before yesterday, which I didn't tell him. Um, and then um, my, uh, my significant uh, professional career was with uh, Unilever, uh, then GE, Amazon, uh, and now at, uh, at the Indigo. Um, at, at Unilever, you know, I, uh, I had the privilege of uh, working for uh, um, Dave Saab, Praveen, Praveen Dave. Uh, Dave Saab, as we uh, very fondly call him. Um, in uh, GE, um, the longest time I worked with was uh, 
Murali Kupuswamy, who recently retired uh, from uh, active work uh, as the uh, head of HR for Herds globally. Why I'm picking these names is um, I've been fortunate to work with some um, not so very easy people. Um, uh, these were tough bosses. They had very high standards. Uh, they challenged you to push your limits. Like for example, I remember when I joined uh, Brooke von Lipton those days, Unilever, Davi Saab was my boss. And uh, because I had worked in Eureka Forbes prior to that, and I had managed HR for salespeople, uh, he gave me regional sales HR position for Southern region. And you know, I did that for about four or five months and I kind of got bored with it. And uh, those days, you know, uh, uh, even a short term career was about eight years. So in about six months time, I went to Davi Saab and I, I told him, you know, Davi Saab, I really want to go work in a factory. That's why I came to Unilever. I, 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 I could have actually been very happy being in, in Eureka Forbes. He said, don't worry, in not too distant a future. Exactly three days from there, uh, my phone rang. And, uh, and he said, uh, Raj, would you go to uh, Gutkeser? I didn't even know where it was. I, I said, I, no, I will go. <laughs> Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. And uh, I went there. And that was uh, uh, Brook Bond's uh, oldest factory, about 100 years old then, three unions. And the gentleman I took over from, Mr. Anjanelo, from whom I learned a lot, um, was, uh, was retiring. Um, and I was uh, probably 28 years old. Um, and, and when I went there, I kind of knew nobody really wanted the job. And, and that's, how, that's how I got it. Now, the, the learning for me was go for the toughest job. Um, and when you're, when you're going and doing uh, really tough assignments and, and doing things which uh, others uh, don't want to do, you automatically elicit sponsors, you know, you're, you're eliciting sponsorship. People are coming and saying, you know what? I will remember this man or woman because he went and did uh, something which others really didn't want to do. What did I learn in gut case? Sir? Phenomenal things. Even today, I mean, I learned, uh, I learned a lot of uh, industrial relations skills, but I learned skills for my life. I was, I was newly wedded then. My wife and I uh, just moved to uh, to that case sir. and uh, i would spend almost like 18 hours at work uh, 12 hours being in uh, the factory the rest of the time either in um, the labor commissioner's office or in or meeting some of our lawyers and then and then she told me you know raj for, for, what are you doing to yourself and to me but never did she ever complain and we moved along all the time right so we moved from uh, um, uh, the sales position that i had in pune to get Kesar. From there, we moved to Mysore. In between, I moved to Kedarpur factory. And when I left uh, Unilever, uh, went to Ford Motor Company. Uh, we were in the US for some time. In Mumbai, we were in Chennai. Then I quit. I moved to GE in Gurgaon. And, and uh, you know, I, I think, I think uh, in addition to professional uh, stuff that you do, your, your personal life needs to be very, very sorted. And uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to have... Uh, uh, Priya, and now uh, Hruday, the three of us, uh, a small family. But going back to your question, one is eliciting sponsors. The, the second one is uh, you should never be afraid to ask for help. Uh, even in Unilever, um, uh, you probably know Harish, uh, Harish Devarajan. Uh, and uh, Harish was uh, uh, an iconic HR leader, uh, even those days, um, more than even now. Um, he is today. There was a guy called uh, Deboshish uh, Roy, um, Santhrup Mishra, who is in Aditya Bilda Group, who was in Unilever. Um, then uh, Bidappa, Prasad Bidappa, uh, Ashok Ramchandran in um, um, uh, Aditya Bilda Group, uh, uh, Chris Shankar in Infosys. We were, all, we were all peers and colleagues. And you learn so much from them. And, and you know, one of the things I always did was went and asked for help. Uh, I don't know this. How do I do this, Harish? I know you've, you've handled tough industrial relations situations. What can I learn from that? And, 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 and again, you know, um, in hindsight, all of this falls in place, right? 
you don't have to do a hundred things. Um, you don't need to be known as someone that solved 85 different problems. But those problems you solve better be the toughest ones that others have not even touched. So, and, and by that I'm saying, make sure that the stuff that you do have really high impact. Uh, in Unilever, I can talk about labor relations that I learned in Gut Kaiser Factory and Mysore Factory prior to that, when we were closing down Kaiser Food Factory. And we did that all with a lot of heart. We just didn't let people go. And one thing that I learned is, you know, have a very high amount of respect for people. RR Nair, you know, was, was an iconic HR leader. And then he taught me a very simple, um, gra you know, a graphic that I would still remember. He said, he said, Raj, think of uh, people, management, and union as three dots on a triangle. The, 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 the top dot in the triangle is the union. The other two dots can be employees and management. He said the union has a thick line into the management and a thick line into the, into the uh, workforce. Uh, and the management has a thick line into the union, but only has a dotted line into the workforce. And, and, and the workforce has a thick line into the union, sometimes has a very hazy line into the management. So he said, as an HR leader, can you get all these three dots be uh, properly into thick lines? And that's when you succeed. So let me, let me pause here. Um, I've gone uh, on and on. Wow, really powerful learnings there. The sponsorship, uh, going for tough challenges, and now the triangle. I'm sure this is something that I'm going to personally uh, value and implement uh, you know, in my career. Thank you so much, Raj. Please do continue. I'm sure our uh, viewers are uh, looking forward to uh, hearing and uh, learning a lot more from you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please do. I said, you know, um, you know when I went to uh, Ford Motor Company, um, we, we launched um, Ford India's uh, first manufacturing plant. And uh, so I was, we were based in Mumbai, but the plant was coming up in Chennai. And, uh, and it, was, it was a green field uh, or a brown field, uh, if you know Chennai, that is. And uh, I, was, I was in what's called the launch training team. And, um, and the job that uh, my team and I had was to be able to hire the people that work in the factory, train them, to make sure a sheet of steel gets converted into, a, into an automobile when it comes out of the door. Phenomenal learning. A lot of things I did for the very first time. We took, we took uh, teams of people across the world on training jobs. I, I still remember um, what I, I was coordinating uh, on the job training in very many ends of the world. There was a group that was uh, training in Dagenham in the UK. There was another group that was training in Thailand. There was a third group that was training in Melbourne and Sydney, Australia. Uh, Melbourne, Australia and, and Sydney was a small other place. And uh, the, uh, I, I still remember when, when we finished the, uh, the, the stamp and body shop training in Australia, the Australian Ford uh, workforce wanted to give us uh, a, a go away, uh, going away dinner. And in that, uh, one of them stood up and spoke. And, and, and we, went, we, we were speaking and we said how much thankful we were to that group for having trained all of us. And this guy stood up and said, you know what, Raj, I should, I should admit that I learned this thing from this group of Indian trainees that came, which I never learned in all my life in Australia, was to bargain in a city market. <laughs> he said, well, I mean, we went to this market, you guys bargained. We could have not even thought of it. And, and guess what? My Australian people actually gave in. <laughs> So, so, and, and so th th those are things that, that you, uh, you know, very nostalgically uh, remember. We put together the entire um, selection system. And that, day, that time Ford was a joint venture with uh, Mahindra. So it was called Mahindra Ford India Limited. And uh, so uh, we were putting up this uh, elaborate uh, uh, selection uh, methodology, which included eye-hand coordination, uh, weight training, strength training, um, and, uh, you know, steadiness of the hand and all of that. So we worked with IIT Madras in setting up all this kind of training. And Mr. Anand Mahindra was coming to the factory to just check, take a look at how the 
building was coming up and and so they brought him to the the training area so it was a it was a huge hall we had converted into all kinds of things because the the build had not started and then he saw all these uh, cute uh, uh, testing devices lying around and and came and said can i can i can i put my hand on this and and we said yeah of course so um, then he said what are you using this for i i said you know we are using this to select or reject uh, a candidate because you know for 300 people we wanted to hire we had something like 30000 applications so he said let me let me check so one of the things that we had was 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 a device to ha- check and high coordination which basically meant you were moving uh, a pin through a sheet of steel which was cut in an s form and you had to use a horizontal uh, knob and a vertical knob and then you needed to move both of them in a way that the that the pin moves through the s and each time the pin touches the uh, the surface of the edge uh, of the s there is a there is a counter and then each time it touches it makes a beep and if there is more than 10 beeps that means your high eye hand coordination is just not good at all and uh, and then you 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 do it for about 10 seconds and if you do it without even touching you you you're pretty much there you can be trained so so mr mahindra came and uh, checked it and within probably half a second he had some 25 beeps and so he asked uh, so will you will you hire me i said well i mean you're the owner of this place otherwise we wouldn't have right so so th- those are some uh, nostalgic things you you kind of think of and you've never done this before so so one of the things i want to tell you know those who are watching here is go do stuff you know you will probably not get it right like jeff wessels always says if an experiment you know gives you the intended result then it's not an experiment you you knew what was coming out he said uh, an experiment is designed to fail now it doesn't mean all experiments have to fail but but if an experiment doesn't fail then it's not an experiment either you are uh, you you are, you are not hitting uh, the threshold of failure or or you already know the result that is coming so wow such rich learnings for uh, all of us thank you so much uh, probably coming a little bit into the present um you worked across industries um, very large companies and now you are into civil aviation um how different is it uh, compared to other sectors and are there some interesting stuff that you can tell us about working in civil aviation you know um you have worked in aviation said um this is one of the most regulated industries you can ever have the airplane is regulated the pilots are regulated the cabin crew is regulated the engineers are regulated those that actually issue your tickets are regulated the person that lets you inside the plane is regulated the person that comes and cleans the plane is regulated how my training room looks like is regulated how many people i can have in my classroom is regulated how i teach is regulated you know so this is probably been one of the most uh, um, unique industries that i have ever worked in and uh, for me personally this is the first indian company i worked in other than my very first job at eureka forbes which was not really long so for almost like 25 26 years i'd only worked with multinational companies so when i went to uh, indigo i really intended to go to an indian company and um, and then i went through my own list of this is not the company i want to work for this is the company i want to work for and i met aditya ghosh once who was then the ceo uh, we met two or three times we hit it off and then he introduced me to rahul bhatia uh, one of the promoters and then i had a very uh, unique uh, interviewing experience i was also interviewed by the cfo of the company and uh, when this was all done um, there was this guy called roland smith um, who was a consultant uh, and then he said raj we want to do an experiment in in your hiring we now have two candidates if you're okay with it uh, will you want to do the experiment i said yeah of course tell me what it is and then he said we want all your direct reports to interview you i said oh really and so all of them were in uh, were in a room and uh, about eight nine of them and uh, so they interviewed me and it was a fascinating experience and uh, apparently um, um they liked me so uh, 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 among the uh, two candidates and tell you what today uh, i've completed uh, uh, today i'm actually two years and one month in the company i've still now not asked any of my direct reports who the other candidate was 
Um, it doesn't bother, bother me. And uh, it didn't bother me then, it doesn't bother me today. But it was a phenomenal experience. Um, in, in terms of aviation, it's, uh, um, it's, it's a very unique industry because costs and your, uh, your focus on cost is a very, very important component among, among various other things. So um, your focus on your customer, focus on your cost, focus on your employee, and focus on your shareholders. These are probably the four stools. And you take one stool away, uh, it's going to be shaky. You take two stools away, it's not going to stand. So, so then you ask yourself, you know, who do you focus on? And you need to focus on all, all four of them. Um, you know, you talked about being on time. Uh, you know, Dave Fest today, I was talking to uh, um, a friend in the Kerala Management Association, and he was being very kind. And he said, Raj, you guys are so much known for your punctuality. We actually set our watch by Indigo's, uh, uh, you know, departure time. And I'm saying, oh, okay, don't give us so much credit. Uh, but 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 we try we try very hard um, to 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 uh, to being on time and to uh, to be uh, courteous. Uh, we of course don't uh, uh, do all that uh, for full service airline does. You know uh, we uh, you know in one of the uh, airlines before I worked in Indigo, I sat in a business class and suddenly the cabin attendant said, "Can I have your glasses, sir?" I said, "What do you mean? I don't drink." She said, "No, no, your eye glasses." And then she took it and then she cleaned it and gave. No, we don't do all that in Indigo. But what we do is, you know, we have clean cabins. Uh, we have on-time performance. We have uh, professional uh, cabin attendants. And uh, we, are a, we are an efficient machine. And uh, lately, we, we smile a lot more. And uh, 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 now, if you ask me, do you train people to smile? Uh, you know what? You actually do. <laughs> because, you know, it, it doesn't come naturally. Um, to, to most of us, um, for, for many people it does come, but but for most it doesn't come. So, but that's not the only thing we train. I mean, there's a lot of regulatory regulatory training we do. Um, of course, uh, you know, sims or uh, simulator. You know, sims, but uh, uh, simulators are, are fun. I've I've actually spent several hours on a on a simulator. To an extent, one of our chief pilots said, "You can actually be a junior first officer, Raj." I said, "Oh well, that's that's great. I I love it." Just that I love my pay of being the CHRO of the company. <laughs> <laughs> that that's so awesome, and I think I I am going to book uh, two or three tickets uh, on uh, Raj Airlines uh, for future episodes. One is going to be around uh, hey, how do you align such a huge workforce uh, to such a wonderful culture? Where I see uh, you know I see some interactions on. Uh, uh, LinkedIn and uh, Facebook and so on, where, uh, you know, there's uh, a, a lot of genuine warmth and camaraderie uh, between individuals in Indigo, irrespective of the kind of role they do. And uh, the second one is a little uh, more personal. Uh, it, it's about the sim, but I'll take that offline. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to pay for it, though. <laughs> Ouch, I might as well become a pilot. <laughs> Those are very, very, very expensive stuff. Uh, wonderful. Uh, thanks, Raj. So coming uh, to a little more uh, uh, personal kind of a question, uh, what does it take uh, to be a successful HR head? You know, you have the four uh, stakeholders to manage, you have uh, peers to work with, uh, you have uh, the CEO uh, to work with, and of course the board members. So uh, very, very uh, interested to know, how do you go about building a wonderful team and working with your stakeholders? Over to you. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of questions. Um, when you ask me, um, what does it take to be a CHRO? I think it, you got to be lucky. Okay, there are lots of good people. Um, you just you just need to be lucky in order to get the job. Uh, having said that, I should I should I should say this to you, right? At Amazon, I had a colleague of mine who actually codified what does it mean to be lucky. Uh, he actually said, luck doesn't come by chance you need to do a few things exceedingly well in order to be lucky. So uh, I, I actually uh, interned with him and, uh, and then we kind of uh, almost came with a white paper on what does it take to be a lucky Amazonian, but uh, that, that for another day, okay? Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, um, the bunch of questions you asked, you know, how do you build a team? How do you manage stakeholders? You know, how do you work with the CEO? Um, there is no one single right answer. Um, uh, what, what do I do, right? Um, much like my uh, managers have
have been and i talked about uh, uh, anand i talked about zavi saab i talked about murli uh, there was a guy called uh, uh, richard farand uh, in hsbc malcolm glad uh, malcolm waget uh, in hsbc who all have been phenomenal influences one thing i got out of them was trust right trust trust your people um now you know dari actually told me once you know i i told him uh, dari sir you're giving me this gutsy factory job and taking over from mr anjaneru who's a legend do you think i can do the job you know i'm i'm i don't have a lot of experience he said he said don't worry raj uh, you go there and always remember i'm only one telephone call away and today you call it as you know he had my back and all that i mean those days we did not use all this high funda english you know all we knew was uh, uh, davisar trusted me i can just go to, go there and do my job and then i had friends like uh, harish and uh, ramesh kumar who was a factory accountant who is a very very good friend of mine right now venkat subramanian who is the managing director of sango bain uh, who was a production manager those days um um bala who was in uh, mysore factory uh, bala chandran pn bala chandran he was a doyen in uh, in coffee uh, instant coffee manufacturer so so these are things um, that that you that you gain from you know trust now um what do i do i trust my people enormously um you know that's one thing um you can ask uh, at least eight out of the 10 people that have worked for me um there's always a statistical average of two people saying what an asshole this guy was but uh, but but at least eight of them would say raj would tremend- would would trust me tremendously uh, but but he would also look for evidence you know i you don't you don't you don't just go trust uh, um uh, you know uh, without uh, uh, you know looking for evidence so so you need to do you need to do the stuff the other one i've always believed in said is you need to know your people you know in spite of artificial intelligence in 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 spite of data analytics and all that uh, you know science can give you there is no uh, other alternative to knowing people really well um i i know a lot of my people really well but i never make decisions based on just my relationships um so you need to be you need to be uh, uh, honest you need to you need to be fair you need to tell people um the the third one and again i learned this in in amazon there was this mentor of mine in amazon her name is uh, shelly uh, sirio um and uh, and shelly told me once she said raj it's okay to be misunderstood for a long period of time and i heard that for the very first time and i said what do you mean by that shelly and she said you will know that more more you work in amazon raj and what that basically meant to us if you know what you're doing you will probably not get all the results immediately but don't don't be so hard on yourself that you're going to stop that and go do something else and she said it's okay to be misunderstood people will come around to knowing what you did actually had a meaning to it when you were actually doing this and you know how do i work with the stakeholders i work very closely with with our board um i work with the chairman of our board i work with the chairman of uh, closely with the uh, chairman of the nomination remuneration committee um of course i work with the uh, i i i talk uh, with the promoters but as as board of directors because they don't they don't act actively participate in the management of the company uh, i work with the ceo i mean i report to the ceo who's also a board member now um there are a couple of things one is um you need to you need to have a lot of credibility now credibility doesn't come by doing one thing well you need to do a hundred things reasonably well um many years ago sarav goel who is uh, the vipros uh, head of hr uh, actually told me raj it is so easy to find out when you're calling somebody on the phone whether the person is focusing on you or reading an email and i said oh really how do you do that and he said if somebody went to you, you call you call that person and, and the person says ah uh, oh, oh, oh what did he just say that means the person is doing either an email or or doing something else and also trying to talk to you now those are very small uh, uh, things but those build your credibility now a young person in your team you know i i i'm i'm at mentor today i also get mentored 
I mentor a lot of people. I mentor flight attendants, actually. Now, not on flight attendant duties, because they'll then be the worst flight attendant ever possible. But, but I mentor them in terms of what do they do, do next. Um, I mentor a lot of my own team members. And the one thing I do when, I, when, when they come is, and I'm not doing this philanthropically, right? I just keep my phone away. I keep it upside down. I keep it on silence. I switch off my uh, Apple Watch. And, and I make sure that that 30 minutes or 40 minutes is their time. I listen to them attentively. I ask questions. I don't give all the answers. And I tell them, don't expect answers from me, but I'll ask you questions. And when I ask you questions, you'll be able to find your own answers. And, uh, and, and doing all this you know, gives you credibility. And you, you have to have a very high say to do ratio, especially when you're, when you're dealing with the board, because you meet the board only once in a quarter. And they need to know, well, this guy says he'll follow up on, follow up on something. He actually does. Then, you know, very importantly, you know, and I, again, I learned this in Amazon, was, um, you know, be open and honest to be able to reverse decisions you made. And oftentimes, you know, I've heard you made a decision, stick to it. But in Amazon, I, I, I learned you made a decision, it's okay not to stick to it. Now, what does it mean? Do you keep changing your decision all the time? No. And, and what they said is, don't spend too much time making a decision. Go ahead and implement it when it is 70% ready. But, but when you're implementing a decision, walk into the door knowing it's a two-door room, which is you walk into the room with a decision, there should be another room where you can walk out uh, by, by either dropping the decision or, or not implementing the decision or implementing it partially or coming back and saying, oh, well, I implemented it, but it didn't really work out very well. And, and, and these are a few things I think uh, you, you, need to, you need to do. So there's no one, one answer said. Thank you, Raj. Uh, very, very uh, enlightening. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, response. Uh, something that uh, occurred to me, and this is uh, kind of, uh, you know, during the interview, is uh, I know you commute between cities quite a bit, uh, right? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I hardly uh, see any uh, turbulence, right? It's it's always calm flying while talking uh, with you, while interacting with you. Uh, how do you manage stress? No, so that uh, you and I will actually make a good mutual admiration society, okay? <laughs> So just so the viewers know, Siddharth and I used to be on the executive committee of National HRD Network. So we worked together for two years. I was one of the vice presidents and, uh, you know, Bala was the president then. And Siddharth was, uh, Siddharth was he and I were uh, partners in crime, you know, even pulling together the, uh, the famous national conference and uh, HR showcase and all of that. Now, you know, how do I, how do I manage myself? I, I should actually thank my father and my mother who gave my DNA, <laughs> you know, this is my, this is my dad's and mom's DNA. And I, I have, a, um, to be frank, I have a very high threshold for crap. Um, well, what, do, what does that mean? I, I don't take myself all that seriously. Uh, I do get angry, but uh, it takes a lot of effort to make me angry. Um, but, but I do get uh, uh, irritated, but, but I, I think I can play act without showing my irritation because you know end of the day as you very rightly said a lot of my team members were probably born uh, when i was just starting to work so you don't want to scare them off um, but but more importantly um, um, it's it's about uh, what 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 do you do like you know um, i uh, i read a lot uh, i love my music and some of my music is music that both my son and my wife hate uh, but I, I have all of them on my phone. I listen to them in my car. And, um, you know, this, this can be in all kinds of languages. I have music in not just Indian languages. That I have Sinhalese music. I love Sri Lanka, by the way. Uh, I love candy. I love the uh, Temple of Truth Relic. Uh, I love it. I, I, I have a lot of Sinhalese music. Uh, I have Egyptian music. I have Arabic, uh, Mexican, French. Now, I don't know any of these languages, okay? For me, this is just the music notes and, and, and the offbeatness. I mean, I don't like 
the typical music it, most of my music is is very offbeat uh, much like an opera singer right i mean uh, you need to have a have a taste for it and i also uh, kind of um, you know at least lately during the lockdown i've been i've been managing to do about 12000 steps a day uh, which is which is actually about seven and a half kilometers of walking. Thankfully, I live in a house. If I were in my apartment in Gurgaon, uh, I would have probably had to only walk inside my apartment. But in Chennai, we live in a house, so I can actually walk around my house. Uh, and you said that you know um, I travel a lot. Yeah, my my um, um, my family. My son basically refused to move to Delhi, and and he said, uh, Dad, all my friends are from Delhi. They will never move there. Why would I move? I said, well, I mean, I had to. <laughs> and and so, um, so from Bangalore, we moved uh, to Chennai last June. So I commute weekends. So, uh, and I do that very uh, consciously. Uh, Friday evening, my eight o'clock flights are all booked. I don't do the staff leave travel. I buy my tickets. Uh, so that way, you know, I contribute to the revenue of the company. And uh, <clears throat> my, my Monday morning 6.30 flights are all booked. My seats are all booked. I'm very predictable and I'm kind of boring in that way. You know, I know what I want. Um, you know, I have my wardrobe is predominantly blue shirts. Uh, we bleed blue in Indigo, but even beyond, even before that, I, I like blue. Never really liked red. Uh, blue was the color we liked. Um, and, and that was a pun intended, uh, red and blue. Um, but um, but beyond that, you know, life is simple. So why, why complicate it? Um, you know, be happy, uh, uh, and, and it, things fall in place. <laughs> Probably I've just been lucky with blessings from my uh, my late grandfather, and my and my grandmother. My grandmother is ninety three, and uh, I I don't talk to her all 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 you know very often. But when I talk to her, it's like you know we just finished talking five minutes ago, and she and I can talk hours together on the phone or uh, or, or face to face and. Um, she really likes me. I'm her first grandson, and that's what all my cousins keep saying. Uh, you know, she likes you a lot more than she likes anybody else. You are the first among equals, and I'm saying, oh yeah, that's a privilege. So, so these are small things that uh, that don't that keep you stress free. I I love the company of my uh, my son. Um, he used to be a little boy. Today he teaches me a lot. He uh, he he gives me lessons on fashion sense. And, um, and he thinks I'm the most unfashionable dad, but he loves me a lot. Uh, so these are things. I mean, what else do you need? <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Raj, sir. Uh, on that note, uh, uh, we will uh, bring this particular uh, flight with uh, uh, Mr. Raj Raghavan to an end. Lots of uh, blue skies and many, many more happy landings. Uh, we look forward to having you, Raj, sir, on the channel uh, many, many more times in the future. And thank you so much for your time today and speaking to our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. It was nice talking to you. Approaching minimums. 40, 30, 20, 10. 